Hi, I'm Lady Nanda and this is Hustling From Home. Today we'll be talking about education, but that which transcends national boundaries. For this purpose, I have with me today Mr. Atul Timurnikar, who is the co-founder and chairman of the Global Schools Foundation, a non-profit organization that works to make education accessible across the world. Thank you so much for joining us, Atul. So tell me a little bit about your experience in the education industry and how you've seen it develop to become more accessible to students from all backgrounds over the years. I have been in the education sector for the past 20 years. And as a founder chairman of the Global Schools Foundation, I have been closely watching the changes in the industry. And let me tell you, we have come a long way from the times of the blackboard to the white chalk to the duster days. The 21st century is a very different place from where you and I were students, which is why 21st century also needs to be very different. Mobile has become every child's tutor, a 24 by 7 tutor, and at the student's command. Since globalization became a modern buzzword and economy started changing, education kept up the pace and changed for the better helped in no small way by the technological advances and upgradation, which is why what we see now is not just a brick and mortar building, what we call a school, but we see an all-in-one institution where students are shaped and groomed for the future. Here, being wired or wireless and miniaturization are the key trends. Blackboards are replaced with smart boards, Laptops and devices slowly being replaced by notebooks and iPads. And the internet is the mother of all textbooks. Among technological developments, the page flip, you know, the right to left that you do on a tablet, just like that, that takes just one second, actually took 20 years of coding effort and millions of lines of code. Companies like Amazon and Apple started introducing it in their devices and it made the reading experience on these devices just like a normal one. Students of today are digital natives who learn the tech language faster than their mother tongues, which is why they're all more knowledgeable from a very young age. It is difficult for the adults around to keep up with pace with them. In such an ambience, providing education is far more challenging than you would imagine. Students are not necessarily in the classroom but in different cities and different parts of the world. Classrooms are not confined to four walls. The smart board is like a portal to countless worlds from around the globe. And the communication, the right kind of communication is vital. Be it the parent or the child, teacher or the student, while all these challenges are of new millennium, they also have made imparting education easier and amplifiable to reach to the remotest corner of the world. As an educationist, these dynamics have been both amazed and excited us for the simple reason that it gives schools like us the power to innovate, improvise, and excel continuously. That's very true. The education industry had, has indeed made significant strides in becoming more accessible. So as I'm to understand, you've also worked a lot trying to make education available to students from different socioeconomic backgrounds. So in the Indian context, a lot of students studying in rural areas have lost their access to education due to the absence of physical classrooms during this lockdown in the country because of COVID-19. So what would you say can be done in India specifically to make education available independent of socioeconomic boundaries? A good quality education, that is. India is a nation of limitless talent. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam once said, and I paraphrase, that India's youth will push the nation towards progress. Yes, India is a young country of innovative people with an improvisational mindset. Tapping into these two qualities is the way forward. And all we need is the will. The will to arm these youth with good education, to give them strength to face the challenges of the future. Now, challenges to the goal are many. Poverty, social barriers, red tape has made it difficult for the benefits of the rich resources this country has to reach the remotest corners. But there is one weapon, one instrument, which is stronger than any man-made barrier, and that is a smartphone. 
We say the smartphone is the new uniform that brings everyone's knowledge to a single uniform platform. Whatever a student's socioeconomic background, 95% of them have a smartphone. A smartphone in their pocket is like an encyclopedia, a teacher, a tool, a voice, a statement, a magic wand, if you will. And in the era of smartphones, education is what you can intake and it can come from anywhere. Even the cheapest smart device is an invaluable instrument of knowledge gathering. And that is the way forward. Harnessing the power of technology through smartphones or other devices that are available to the lowest strata of the society can be the light at the end of the tunnel and we find ourselves in. Lockdowns are not a problem. When a smartphone can be your window to the world, socioeconomic constraints can overcome when an online classroom can bring the entire knowledge to your home, wherever you are. This is what GIS is doing in all its campuses around the world. In the era of lockdowns, where students cannot come to the school physically, we made the entire school a virtual school and are taking this virtual school to every country, every city. And we are doing this with the simplest devices like a smartphone. Our teachers engage in full six hours of live lessons via live video conferencing and presentations as compared to some schools which mostly rely on sending and receiving materials via school portals. Besides this, talent can be hunted and harnessed. We at Global Schools Foundation do it through scholarships. Eligible students can apply and take advantage of our merit convened scholarships to advance their future prospects. With internet via 4G in every corner of India, students can now adopt these tools, which will be very useful in providing education to the poorest of the poor and pull them out of their circumstances and take them to a brighter future. With the current leadership thinking along the same lines and the mobile 5Gs being just a matter of time, I think if there is a will, there is a way to go for it. Right. And the Global Schools Foundation, if I'm to understand correctly, is based in Singapore and also has operations in Malaysia. So tell me a little bit about how COVID-19 and its spread has affected education in both these countries. I would say that most of the ASEAN countries have responded to the coronavirus in almost similar ways. Albeit the speed of execution may have differed due to the different situations of the virus in various phases. Two of the most active and Asian tigers, ASEAN member countries, Singapore and Malaysia, are both who reached a first world status within a very short time. Through a sheer determination of their leaders to succeed, they provided good education to their youth to ensure that within three generations or four generations, they reach a status in the world map where everyone sits up and takes notice of them. Now, despite this power of economic strength, these countries, among others, are facing the same challenges in the face of coronavirus as any other country in the world is facing. But the way some of these countries in Asia are handling the situation makes all the difference. Countries have tapped their technological advances and economy to ensure that education is not affected due to the lockdowns. The governments of these countries are educating the public on the do's and don'ts. So are the schools. Government schools have been very proactive in spreading the message of good hygiene, social distancing, and lockdown measures which are being implemented strictly across all countries. But care is also taken that public school education is not affected. Local schools are following home-based learning and using virtual classrooms and assignment-based portals to keep the students engaged and to prevent them from mingling with each other and breaking the social distancing rules. GIS has started in a big way, virtual classrooms for all the students, be it Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, UAE, Thailand, India, where all of these students are logging on to online classrooms, which feature a full six hours of live lesson via video conferencing. We have evolved specially curated timetables for the academics, playtime, family time, etc. 
this very well thought through, my team of experts from UK, US and Asia has taken into consideration both the attention span of the student and the agility. It also considers the time that needs to be put in by the parents, since virtual classrooms involve a lot of parent time as well. We can proudly say that the statistics that we have collected over the last few weeks indicate that the learning outcomes are far better in this virtual classroom situation. The students are far more attentive and they are grasping things in a far more quicker way as compared to the actual classrooms, which have other elements of disruptions. So what do you think are some of the challenges India faces in providing primary and secondary universal education? And how can this pandemic serve as a springboard for innovation around this concept? What the COVID-19 is doing is allowing everyone to think laterally to see how to survive. Some same thing for education players as well. We have a slightly different approach to this. Let us for once assume that the role the government plays is always going to be restricted in resources, people execution issues, finding new solutions, etc. End of the day, the government is just about a few thousand people. But see where is the opportunity? It is with the 1.2 billion people in India. The best education can be provided by the real public in the private sector. A strong participation to India's education issues is to get schooling content on the mobile, to allow the private sector or companies or NGOs to come up with solutions for public education. If and only if the private sector can bring about the education on mobile, in an on-demand film format like Netflix, we will have an incredible solution. You will have millions of teachers as compared to thousands. And by having the best teachers from rural areas, will create more skills and much better talent. Like I said before, poverty, socioeconomic backgrounds, red tapes are some of the regular challenges or roadblocks that stand between a student and education. But again, Technology is the solution. Ramping up investments in technology into school system will provide immersive learning experiences for the students. While India follows its own curriculum, inspired from the best of the other education systems around the world, Indian education has its own strengths. However, moving away from great centric success meters and emphasizing the understanding of concepts may go a long way into tapping students' inherent talents. Now, with COVID-19 pandemic in our midst, this is the right time to invest heavily into bringing these technologies to the school level. This will not only ensure that no further disruptions to education, but also will mean bringing digital technologies to the very core of the education offerings. Institutions ought to pivot this because it is the most important investment we can ever make today to nurture students who will be ready to enter workforce of tomorrow. I quote John Lewis, who said, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? And finally, what role do you think education plays in the world's handling of this pandemic and post-pandemic recovery? This pandemic is about education, about our personal hygiene, about community hygiene, about health. So every country, every community, every family, every individual has now an opportunity to see what is in their best interest. India is fortunate that it has a very decisive leadership, never seen in the past few decades, which does not shy, which keeps the interest of poorest of poor, which keeps the nation above everything else, which does not beat around the bush, takes the devil by the horns, regardless of the consequences, and goes all out to solve the problem. The evidence and results are there in the public domain for all of us to see. So India, with these steps, will likely have minimized COVID impact by over 70 to 80 percent, and so would have saved millions of lives of poor people. Apart from these, India's rich 
cultural traditions such as yoga, vegetarianism, etc. will add to minimizing the negative effects of the COVID virus. Very aptly spoken indeed. Education has always played a significant role in our lives and will definitely continue to do so. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Atul, and for sharing your insight with us. And to all the students out there, continue to work hard. Studying is really important even during this time, not so much for grades, but more so to develop yourself, to continue to learn. Learning is a lifelong process after all. And to everyone, stay safe, stay informed, and keep hustling. Thank you.